Hello guys. Hello guys. I'm Padin. I am Nelson. Today we're gonna teach all of you about nouns. Yeah, so here is a little bit introduction about nouns. It is one of the major and largest word classes. A noun refers to person, animal, or thing. There are two types of nouns, which are proper nouns and common. Proper nouns name particular person, places, or things. For example, Miss Chester. Hi, Miss Chester. Hi. Use the Malaysia Sava and etc. For common nouns, refer to people, things, but are not the names of the particular individuals. For example, yeah. university, lecturer, students, and many more. Continue from common nouns, there are two types of common nouns, which is countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Okay, for countable nouns, it refers to things that you cannot count separately. They can be singular or plural. You can use a or an before countable nouns. For example, one woman, eight planets, I'd like a sandwich. Okay, so the next part is uncountable nouns. It refers to things that you cannot count separately. They usually have no plural form. We usually do not use a or an with non-countable nouns, though they are often preceded by some or the. For example, you should avoid cholesterol. For these sentences, we cannot use you should avoid uh, cholesterol. Can you call it cholesterol? Nah. Okay, that's all. That's all from us. That's all for nouns. And let's move to the next session. Yeah. Bye. Hello everyone, I will proceed to part 4. In English language, there are some nouns that have both count and non-count meaning. Sometimes, a word that means one thing as a non-count noun has a slightly different meaning if it also has a countable version. So, it is important to pay attention to a context and meaning of the noun in order to determine whether it is being used a count or non-count meaning. We probably know that the water is a non-count noun. We can say too much water, so much water, a little water. It's referred to a liquid, so it is a non-countable. However, in other meaning, water can be a count noun. We can say, can I have a glass of water please? Or, can I have two water? It is countable noun, but in different meaning, because we add some quantifiers before the nouns. So, this is proof that the water is a count and non-count meaning. Hello everyone, now I will proceed to Part 5 of non-count and count noun. In this part, we will learn how non-countable noun become countable. We can make non-count noun become countable by adding press. Let us take a look for a few examples. First, a piece of. For non-count, we can say some advice. But when we make it countable, we can say a piece of advice. To have more list of press, turn to appendix 6 on page A5 in our textbook. For extra note, as we know, all the non-count nouns are commonly used with some or any. So, when we use press, the sentence sounds formal and usually it is used in writing. When some and any, usually used in daily conversion. For example, can I give you some advice? And for press, can I give you a piece of advice? It sounds different, right? Now I will continue to part 6. In this part, we we'll learn how we can use non-count noun in a countable sense. We do it with the verb a and plural to mean kind. 
type or variety of. As we know, a or n are used and count noun. So we can make the noun count noun sound like incountable. For example, in Italy, I tested a new pasta. A uh, in this sentence is referred to countable noun, where pasta refer to noun. In this last part of count noun and non count noun, I will explain about irregular noun. In the first part, I will explain about non count noun that ends with s. Usually, for non count noun will be considered as singular noun as mentioned earlier. Examples of non count noun that ends with s are mathematics. Statistics, billiards, balls, mumps, lumps, etc. Generally, we can say that subjects such as studies and activities, games and illnesses should end with end. Now, let's proceed to second part. Usually, when it comes to plural forms, we will have to add S or ES at the end. However, there are some cases where the words will not end with S or ES. For example, criterion becomes criteria, stimulus becomes stimuli, phenomenon becomes phenomena, etc. So, we can conclude that words that end with FE will have to change F to V and add S at the end. For words that end with F, we have to change F to V and add ES at the end. As for words that end with O, we have to add ES at the end. For words that end with US, we have to change US to I. And last but not least, for words that end with ON, we have to change ON to A. Last but not least, there are countable nouns that have no S, ES, I, or A at the end but still considered as plural noun. Those words are people and police. Thus, they take plural verb. Yeah. 